All right, everyone. Welcome back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us here. So we're just down here assessing the situation with this tank. Um, man, a lot of comments on that last video. Um, thank you for everybody that took time to to drop their ideas and suggestions and uh, and support mm -hmm. in the comment section below. We're really good to see. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah. So we just kind of thought we'd pick this up and, and answer a few of the questions that we saw a lot um, and uh, address some of the other concerns. So one but, of the biggest questions was, uh, why don't we put a bladder in the tank? Yeah, so um, generally speaking, bladders just come in, you know, different form factors. Um, generally speaking, they're square, they're rectangular. Um, None of these really fit that. Uh, these tanks, as you can see on this one, are actually saddled into the hull. So they're, uh, they're tapered on, on the, the hull side um, to kind of fit that contour. They're much skinnier at the bottom. Let me just slide this out of the way a little bit. Um, these tanks come down into here somewhere, so they're, they're very narrow at the bottom, wider at the top. That taper also goes back this way, so on the bulkhead side, they're wider at the top and on the bottom than the forward side here. So to get a bladder to fit that, it's just not feasible. It'd have to be a custom thing. Uh, we'd still have to cut into the tank. We'd have to get the liner in there. And uh, to further complicate things, there is a baffle inside this tank. And so a baffle is basically the same shape as this end you know, but fits in the middle here. And so, that baffles pretty much dead center on this tank. That prevents the fuel from sloshing back and forth and exerting excessive pressure on the ends. And so uh, you'd have that baffle to deal with and there'd be no way to get a baffle back in there with a, with a bladder. So that one's out. Um, there may be some like flow coat liners that a guy could use, but you're really relying on it adhering well to the inside of that. Um, it just, it's really not feasible either. Mm -hmm. I don't know how like the fitting situation would go as far as the fill pipe, the vent and the suction there, like how, how it would interface. Yeah. I think one of one of the other comments is that, that why don't we just build our fiberglass tanks down lower like we want to now. Um, time constraints. Yep, that's a, a massive project. Uh, we've just now got our other fiberglass project pretty much more or less wrapped up and the cabin's all clean, down here is all clean, everything's all clean of fiberglass dust at last. So. Not only would it be a humongous project, uh, supplies and everything, and uh, kind of just like the scope of project it would be too, yep. to like kind of future plan, future proof it and everything. This generator would be probably right in the way because we'd need to like uh, take off that mount there, hit supported, get that tank out of there, bust out all of that whatever sort of framing they have going on there yeah it'd be a it'd be a pretty massive project yeah we don't know what's in here for sure we know it's ballast of some sort mm -hmm. we can see looking in the ends right there that aren't filled there's it's probably um cutoffs of steel from a machine shop or a welding shop there's stubs of flat bar metal in there that we can see whether or not there's uh, concrete that it's mixed in it's anybody's guess. We just haven't cut into it to know. Um, we might find out because we are going to have to cut this end down right here to um, be able to, to get these tanks out. Um, that was one of the big concerns is how do we know how this tank looks and the bottom of it? Well, those are big concerns right there. We don't know what we're gonna find on the bottom of these tanks. There could be a lot of corrosion there. It could be issues. Um, we are going to go ahead and bust this out because this tank over here, uh, this is movable right now. We've got, we've got the room to pull this out and move it and inspect it. We can get it pulled over here enough. We can lift it up enough to get underneath and inspect the integrity of this tank. It's empty right now. Um, 
it's empty because we plumbed in new new valve, new hardware on here, new sight glass. So it's not an issue to get out right now. It's just as simple as removing this big, huge support right here and uh, this one up here and cutting this away. And so it's not a real big deal. We can get in there, we can inspect this one. Uh, the other side is a completely different matter because uh, we've got exhaust components in the way right there. We've got a generator in the way right there. There's no way that we're moving that. And so by cutting this tank and converting a portion of it into a hydraulic tank and the rest into a fuel tank, we still have that room to break it apart and that should give us enough wiggle room to be able to take out the small section that we convert into a hydraulic tank, get that pulled out, out of the way. The other piece we can push back and pull it out. Getting this tank basically prepped to cut up, there's a few things that we need to do to ensure our safety. Uh, I think the first thing that we need to do is get this crab pump out of the way. It's just kind of dangling there right now. Um, we can't put any of that plumbing back into place until we deal with this tank. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get that drop down, get it out of the way. So like Matt was saying, as far as just replacing these tanks right now, it just doesn't make sense from a time standpoint for us. The fiberglass work is all done. The fish holds are ready to go. We do have this crab pump to get in place and mounted. Um, it's all roughed in basically. But now we've got this issue to deal with. So we need to get this all squared away before this can be mounted again and everything can be bolted up. Yeah, so we still have a lot of stuff to get ready on this boat in order to crab fish it in January. Um, it's mid-October right now as I speak. We've got hydraulics to get set up on the deck. We've got fuel manifold for supply and return. We've got like a huge list of stuff to do that's just fishing related yep. in order to get ready to go fishing. So yeah. the last thing we want to do is delve into another fiberglass project. Yeah. And uh, to be quite honest with you, it's awful nice to have the dust cleared down here and um, and cleaned up. I do look forward to the day we can make this engine room the way we want it. Uh, that won't be this year, probably won't be next year. It'll be a little ways down the line. It'll probably be the same time we eventually repower, so. Yeah, I think that that's probably an accurate timeline is that uh, when we're ready to repower this, then we'll deal with the stuff in here. That That is the time to do it. We'll require cutting a big hole in the fish hold wall to drag the the existing main out and then at that time these fuel tanks could go right through that hole too. It just all kind of makes sense. I, I probably misused the terms electrolysis and corrosion when I first spoke about this. This is more a, a process of corrosion as opposed to electrolysis where there's um, current flowing through it. Uh, I guess I was just talking about like, you know, whenever you use salt water is, is a medium, you know, it'll, it'll accelerate corrosion and, and I probably used it improperly as, as electrolysis. Um, I believe that the issue at hand here is just a result of everything else on this boat of having leaks and having saltwater intrusion. Um, you know, guys, this is pretty common in, you know, a fishing fleet anywhere. You know, we don't have high end yachts that, that we pour tens of thousands of dollars into, you know, on an annual basis or more. Um, Alaska's fishing fleet, if you look at the boats in it, there's a lot of them that are pretty rough shape. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, guys do the best they can to maintain them, but there's things like leaks that happen. And in this case, this was all saltwater leaks coming from that fill pipe right there, which will probably glass up off the deck. Um, it's just a weird combination of things, really. Everywhere where guys have drilled into their deck to mount a long line reel or some kind of deck hardware and didn't do it properly, those are all failure points that are happening now. You've got a lot of weak decks on boats, and that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And so going forward, when you start to 
rebuild things or repair things, it's important to take that little bit of extra time to change that mindset and not be reliant on, you know, adhesive that will fail after a while. Everybody loves to use 5200 and they think, oh man, this stuff is gonna last forever because it's so hard to get apart. Well, the reality is it does break down over time and it does start to leak. Mm -hmm. And um, where you can't see it is where it really hurts you. And this is a perfect example of that is salt water getting in here, running down that fill pipe, getting in behind this tank and this bulkhead in just the right, perfect place. All right, ready, buddy? Oh, you want the light end? Yeah. Ugh. It's not too bad. Hey, don't chip the paint now. Just grab myself an absorby here. These are just uh, fuel oil absorbents. Um, guys call them pig mats down south. I don't know if that's a whole down south thing or just a southern thing. I always hear those guys refer to them as pig mats down there. We just call them absorby pads here. This is all just the old return lines. Um, this here is all gonna get replaced before long. I'm gonna start working on the uh, start working on the fuel system manifolds for the return and also the suction that'll allow us to essentially direct the fuel wherever we need it to go and to be able to pull off whichever tank that we want to. So I'm not too concerned right now about saving this other than for the short term. Um, but I don't think this will even be long enough when we're done here. Nope, it sure won't. What will probably happen is we'll go ahead and get the starboard tank um, busted loose from its mount over there and then we'll be able to refill it. The only reason we haven't yet was that we wanted to go to the fuel dock and actually physically um, measure the fuel that we put in because of meter on the fuel dock hose. We can fill it to 50 gallons and then we can mark our sight glass, 100 gallons mark our sight glass and then we know exactly what that tank is holding. Um, at any given level. Glad we didn't do it yet because now we need to get it pulled out of there and inspected. I'll take this handle off. That's in the way. So this way had been modified by the previous owners. It had a big long handle on it that allowed you to open and close this valve from the other side of the vessel because there was so much stuff in the way over here. I don't know if you've seen that or not. If not, you'd have to go back to the kind of the beginning of our, um, I guess when we first acquired this vessel and first started cleaning things up. But there used to be a bunch of refrigeration equipment in the way right here, so you couldn't really get back into this corner. So, let's see here. Uh, yeah, this is just kind of our cobbled together ugliness. Um, don't judge me. <laughs> this is this is not the final thing right here. This was on the wall. So let's see. These are the fuel lines going to the generator. I plumbed in with some nice stainless tube. I need to pick up some mounts for these, but uh, this is what everything will be plumbed in in here in the future. And then some short lengths of hose for vibration. Um, expansion, contraction, blah, blah, blah. Somebody asked me if the new hydraulic tank would be hard plumbed in with piping and no hose. Yes and no. Um, the manifold will be stainless steel. Our valves will come off of that. Then it needs to go into hose to allow vibration. You know, if you plumb that in solid, you can crack welds and stuff over time. Um, all metal will work harden under vibration and then, and then you get uh, failure points in it. So um, probably have a short hose between the tank and, and the metal manifold and then hose going to the pumps. Try as a bone. Wow. So now this will leak everywhere because it's unattended. 
<laughs> even though it's in the exact same position it was earlier. And that's how that seems to work for some reason. So our goal here is not to put too much water in that tank because we're going to have to dispose of it. It's like two bucks a gallon to get rid of oily bilge water, which isn't bad. But uh, we certainly don't want to fill that tank up to the top. So we can just get enough in there to get the fuel out and then just start to see a little bit of water coming through at the end. That'll be ideal. There we go. Water? No. Something just... Oh. Something just broke loose. I don't know what's going on there. This last one's pretty cloudy. So, um, Matt just poured in a couple more gallons of water. So I think we put seven, about seven gallons of water in there. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Seven and a half-ish. And, uh, well, Oh yeah, you can see a layer of water down in the bottom of this for sure. So we're definitely getting water out of this. We're not going to pour this um, fuel back into the tank right away. We'll just leave that jug out on deck and let the stuff separate out. And then we'll uh, probably pour it off into another container. And just try and keep the amount of water in our tanks to a minimum. So yeah, we're definitely getting some some stuff in there now so we actually could peer down into the tank from where that return line is and you can see right where it uh, right where the leak formed there's a, a little black spot probably about the size of a dime right there and I'm guessing it's just a tiny couple little pinholes right now but um, I'm thinking it wouldn't have been very long before that small couple pinholes turned into a, a dime sized hole which would empty that tank out in probably about 20 minutes yeah i think i see a a little bit of a bulge right there where it is oh we went ahead and broke that line off of there got the reducer fittings off is going kind of slow there's some crud down in there too of course um you know blocking that off so Matt could see a piece of junk in there floating around. Looked like a piece of paper or something, maybe. Who knows? So, the last uh, <clears throat> last bit that we poured off here, it probably had about half of it was water. So, yeah, well, a couple of nice chunks of garbage in there. You can see a pretty good layer of water down there at the bottom. What's going on, Matt? All right, well... <laughs> I got my old friend, we struck a lion, uh, looks like this is just a 2x6x2 uh, glassed over, so it's either going to be butt jointed here or butt jointed there. It's going to start by cutting this glass back right here and see if we can pull it out. If not, I'll cut right here. Yep. Put the layer of love and line out. Yep. Oh, there it is. That's oil. <laughs> Boat, they said it'll be fun. They said, Well, for anyone who romanticizes about buying a boat and becoming an Alaskan fisherman, guess watch our channel and you get a good idea about what it's all about. Yep, this is the reality of it, guys. <laughs> and if you don't know how to do this yourself, figure it out and learn. 
or go broke paying somebody else to do it. Oh, it moved already. Hey, hey. There's the skin. What do we got here? What kind of monstrosities? So four by on the end. With the screw that way and screws that way. I'll probably just have to run my blade in and whack those real quick. It's nasty. It's bleeding, Matt. Yeah. Be careful. Don't crack your elbow. Oh my god. It's such a mess. Right? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so much that's so much gross grossness. It's like flowing out of there. It's grossness upon grossness. Lucky you guys got to follow along here. Yeah, just a little bit of fuel hiding in this hole over here, I guess. Oh, it's just gushing out of there. It is. Lovely. You're moving the whole tank. I kind of thought that was the case. I guess if you're on that corner, you know. There you go. Uh huh. Yeah, I've got one. Big reveal. Yeah, yeah. That is gnarly. Okay, well, the demo is going to start in here. And there's nothing that we can do about it except move forward now. Yeah. All right, just trimmed off the edge of this just to give us a little more opening here. Gonna try and wiggle it up and see if it'll slide out a little bit. Uh, yesterday we got the, got the oil out of it. Uh, we just filled it with some water and, and floated most of it out of here, which worked out pretty good. There's about five gallons in there that we got. And then uh, we stuck our little transfer pump that we use for changing oil down in here. This is just waste oil pump, so it didn't matter if it got dirty. Um, crammed the hose through the vent up there, got it down in here somewhere. It was really, really funky. Um, I don't know what's going on down there. And so I'm kind of glad that we didn't just stuff it down there from the beginning and pump that out because it would have just mixed in with the, the good fuel that was in there and um, contaminated it. So uh, there's that, I guess. Uh, just looking at the side of here, you know, where there wasn't really much trapped water. You can see there's just some slight pitting, but that's... That's nothing to be concerned about right there. Um, at the end of the day, when we're done with this, we get it cleaned up, inspected. If there's some spots like this, it won't be a big deal. Um, we're definitely going to make this supported so it just it can't get moisture underneath of it. We'll, we'll put it up on... I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. Probably weld a piece of uh, angle aluminum to the bottom. And that'll that'll lift it up, and it'll it'll allow it to to vent underneath. We just kind of got to see what what we find here. So uh, really so first things first, we're gonna come in here <clears throat> with the jigsaw and start cutting this thing open. Um, there's not really like a risk of explosion or anything with this. It's just uh, diesel fuel. So as long as we don't get our blades smoking hot, we won't have any problems. We'll just take it slow and easy. <laughs> So, um, 
Oh god, it's so nasty down there, Matt. <laughs> Sorry guys. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare yourselves. It's like splunking in a oil well. Yep, it's uh it's kinda gross. It is pretty gross looking at it. <laughs> We're just getting ready to suck the rest of the garbage out of the back of this tank. We kind of got it propped up here. Um, let's see if we can get the rest of this junk out of here. It's pretty nasty. Might have lost our prime, huh? Come on, baby. All right. Well, here's the uh, horrible looking stuff that we pumped out yesterday. Um, the reason that's black is because that was... Uh, just used motor oil that was in this pump. Um, it's got a little layer of diesel on top of here and some oil, but the rest of it's just funky water. So now it's just gonna reverse that pump and that'll prime this line. starting to slurp in there Matt that's pretty much the stuff that was coming out of there yesterday so yeah we would have just mixed that all up if we would have tried to even tip this tank around it probably would have just mixed that all up with the good fuel that was in there and it just all would have been garbage Not it, huh? yeah at the very least we can burn that fuel in our uh, in our stove cans were cramping up <laughs> Holding those terminals on. <laughs> okay, so just a rough measurement over uh, 12 inches wide gives us about nine cubic feet. So that's around 68 gallons. So we're gonna go over about 13 inches and cut there. We're actually gonna take a little bit of a sliver out of this and that's gonna allow us some uh, air gap against the bulkhead here and then also between the tanks. So, uh, I'm just gonna get started with the Sawzall here and then I'm come down with the, uh, maybe the Jigsaw. I think I'll have to go across the top with the Jigsaw. So there's uh, barely enough room to do that. This is gonna be tricky. Let's get going. tank. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was just using this to start a little hole and yeah, I think I'm just going to come down with the jigsaw. Good start. Bro. So soapy water works really good. To not only keep your blade cool, but also clean the uh, the cuttings out of it. Aluminum really loves to clog up uh, teeth on blades. Nice thing about using water too, soapy water is then you're not putting oil on your uh, your metal that you're gonna have to weld later. So, makes it a little nicer, I think. All right, we'll keep cutting, guys, and bring you back once we go to the top. Okay guys, so we cut the top of it with a sawzall and you saw it was pretty loud and obnoxious. <laughs> Probably muted that part of the video. <laughs> but um, now we're working on 
rocking this tank out of the slot here, down through the come along around the outlet there, or the lifting eye on the twin disc. And so you just apply a little pressure there. We're just gonna try and jimmy it out and gain access to the backside. Yeah, let's just, you do your end, I'll do mine. Okay, that's working on the way here? Yeah, you can take that. Four. Bust Round, my toe. Rounds our brains. All right, while we're still here, you guys probably fell asleep by now. Okay, here's our uh, dilemma. No clearance, very little clearance. I just took that valve off right there, so at least uh, I think I can slip in there. I need to bring this out a little bit more, I think. And then you can see what we got going on down here. It's just a big, gross, ugly mess, but we only have uh, probably about eight inches right there to the bottom of the tank, to the back side of it. Over here, of course, is more, but uh, I think we're gonna have to cut from underneath here as far as we can. We'll cut down the back side as far as we can. Hopefully we can meet in the middle and part this thing off. Yeah. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, a little more wiggling and then we'll do some cutting and hopefully, hopefully we can get the two pieces, one shoved back in, the other pulled out and then we can lift this one up over this and that's gonna give us a couple of inches of clearance. I think this hydraulic tank is going to have to get unbolted and moved, of course. Um, drain it and move it. I know it's going to be right in the way. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, it didn't dribble all over me. That's yeah. the plus. All right, folks, back down in the hole. Yeah, um, the carnage down here, it's unreal. <laughs> Boy, it doesn't take long to really trash out a workspace when you start demoing something out. But uh, we did successfully get these tanks cut in half. Um, our audio might have been off during that whole time. So uh, I don't know. This is as far as it's going to come out. So whatever we need to do to it is going to have to happen back there. We're hoping there's enough room to rotate it around and manipulate it to get a new end plate on it. Um, the first thing, of course, will be to get that area mucked out, cleaned up real good, and then also go through and clean this tank real good, clean the bottom, get all this weird, I don't know what this stuff is, it's some kind of glue they got going on here. Uh, yeah, it's, who knows, it's sticky, whatever it is. Um, we'll get all that cl cleaned off. We'll get, um, get the tank cleaned up real good. Make sure that, uh, there's no, no deep, um, pitting or corrosion. I do see some on the bottom. It doesn't look bad. I think it's okay. Um, what will be the old end of the fuel tank will now become the new hydraulic tank for everything on deck. Um, our anchor winch, all of those systems. 
and then the small hydraulic tank that is kind of right in our way as we speak will be dedicated solely to the steering and then we'll have uh, we'll have this new tank teed in to the steering also so if we ever have a failure in the steering lines or anything like that uh, we can easily refill that tank once the repair is made and that gives at least our steering part some redundancy which it doesn't have now okay so plan is to go ahead and remove this tank by the time we goof around trying to slide that big half up in there and probably not end up having enough room anyways to manipulate that other one no, um, I don't might as so. well just take the time to pull this part since it needs doing anyways so yeah this guy we may end up just moving it a little bit too, huh? Um, so right now, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a weird arrangement here. You've got like a lot of extra stuff going on on these return lines. Um, we're really only just going to need one of these and that's going to be coming off the uh, steering pump. Um, one comes off the pump, goes to tank, the other one goes to the helm and returns. So you've got constant flow of oil going through your helm, uh, your steering helm. And so we're just gonna end up with one tank or uh, one filter here and we'll eliminate this. So like this T can go away, this hose can go away, these other associated hoses can all go away and get that area cleaned up. So we may end up just moving this over a little bit and mounting it here even. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be a better choice and then we'll just come off with a single line over there to uh, the pump. Don't know for sure yet, but at any rate, this can come out and get it all cleaned up. We're gonna have to break these other valves off, um, plug these ports. I don't know that we'll bother welding them, probably just plug them. Yeah, probably just plug them. Yeah. That'd be fun. And quite a strange arrangement of stuff going on there. A, little, a lot of bushing, I see. Uh, yeah. Um, bushing down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I just closed these valves off anyways. Um, we're just going to start by breaking this one right here, and then we can use the hose to drain this tank into a bucket. I don't know how full this thing is. Yeah, I was wondering that myself. It's hard to say at this point so we'll go through and we'll tear down all these fittings this one looks like it's okay but this one over here leaks so we'll get them busted down probably put uh, like a male to female swivel on these so that way if it does leak a little bit you can always go in there and you can snug it up uh, the way they are right now, you can't do anything about it without breaking loose hoses and and then it just turns into a, a big fiasco at that point. Yeah, let's see how big of a Those mess clothes. I can make. Yep. You think just like right here? Yeah, I'll pin it up for you a little bit. A little pinch. we cut it like half a gallon will come from somewhere <laughs> yeah magically always does okay not a whole lot of space in here a little bit huh looks like just enough oh i meant in this bucket bucket Well, thankfully we were able to slide that tank out enough for me to get back in behind there and cut it. I don't think that we would have been able to do what we're hopefully gonna do otherwise. I think that big tank would have had to been cut up. Oh, you're about uh, two thirds full.
All right, new container acquired from the dumpster. Ooh, sounds like it's getting pretty low here, so hopefully that is the case. So we just recycle all our oil, used oil, used hydraulic fluid, stuff like that. Um, However, the harbor master, they let us pay a, they let us pay him for burning it in their waste oil burner, heat in their shop. So that's pretty nice of them. Two bucks a gallon. There are some shops around town that take. We'll take it for free too, but this stuff is, well, this stuff here is fine. The other stuff, you don't want to give them contaminated stuff with like village water and stuff like that in it. It's not very nice. Alrighty, well, we'll work on getting these other lines broke down, I guess. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Well, well. Continue on. Just draining off the last uh, fluid in these elbows and valves. Cut off the other two houses there. So. All this stuff is really stiff and we need a replacement here anyways. So I should be able to unbolt this thing and get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and I think we can just pull this tank right out. I sure hope that we can swing it around this corner here. More importantly, I hope that we can swing it back in. Should be able to, even if we have to remove this pump right here. It's not too big of a chore, just a little bracket there is no big deal. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be tempted to build a new bracket for it because that thing is ugly. <laughs> Okay. Say hello to my little friend. What's going on here? Just uh, taking the bolts out of this tank and mounting it to the wall. Uh -huh. Leg bolts. Just as I suspected. Oh, Without thank washers. Which thankfully, they're not bolted on the other side of that plywood. <laughs> I was half expecting that. <laughs> Heavy. Not too bad. 50 pounds, I reckon. <laughs> Alright. Whoa. That's a nice looking tank, though. That really opens up the wall. Ooh, that is kind of heavy. Not gonna lie. A lot of hardware on it, though, too. Yeah. First look at what we got going on here, I guess. So, blank slate again. There's our tanks. So what kind of uh, oil pump is this anyways? Uh, now, this is a Vickers, um, I think it's a V20, I'm not sure. I yeah, looked I it up the other day. I'm pretty sure that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, it's a little V20. Okay, yeah, so you can see these fittings are leaking here. Um, whenever you're using hydraulics, it's generally not good to just go in there with like a, a nipple like that and then whatever, an elbow or even a king nipple. A king nipple, you could at least loosen that and tighten this on the hose. But this configuration, you can't do anything with that if it leaks. The best thing to do is go in with the straight male fitting like this and then a female swivel. So you can crack that, you can tighten up the male, and then you can retighten the female against your fitting or your hose or whatever else you got going on. But this gives you no options whatsoever, other than to keep jamming absorbance up against it. And that's Never not good. That's not a practical solution. Okay, um, I guess we're down to the part where we have to see if this plan is gonna to come together and we can actually get this piece out of here. Boy, it's... Just 
Don't get your fingers chopped off. I want my nice flange to get all nasty. Bottom of this thing is disgusting still. Disgusting. Wow, is that actually gonna work? It is. See the hole, guys? That little fizzle mark right there? That little fizzle mark is a hole right there. Yeah, right there. That's it. There's you can believe that. That fizzle mark right there, too. Where at? That little brown smudge, maybe? On the bottom? No, nope, right on here? the side. On the side. Oh, right here? Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Yupper. It'll be interesting. We haven't seen the back side of this, so um, you know, you're gonna be seeing it for the first time along with us. We saved the best for you guys. Okay, well let's push this one back out of our way. Hmm? Sure. Now Matt can get that one pushed back out of the way, I think. Maybe. You kind of got that. Oops, careful now. <laughs> Nothing. I was going to say you kind of got that. Um, weird angle there, but it, it should clear. Watch your fingers. That cardboard's probably hanging everything up, getting all bunched up underneath of it. Yeah. Okay. If this right. works, it'll be a nice thing. So uh, we really only got one straight cut on here. The rest we just brought out um, a little bit long because we need to actually leave a gap in between these two tanks and the bulkhead when we're done. And so uh, the sum of the two tanks will be probably like two inches shorter. So we'll just come back up here. We'll get this marked and trimmed and and we should end up with a, a tank that's about 13 inches wide. We'll be able to get a good um, measurement on this now. Yes. Yeah, so. oh. I got this thing. I got it. Now that brace is in the way, but... Well, if it comes out, it'll go back in because it'll be a touch skinnier. Okay, I got it, bud. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Not that heavy. All right. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, there it is. Got it out. Yeah. And here is the <laughs> cavity it left behind. You. Yeah. Who's the one cleaning it? Not uh, me. Hey, I've been back there already. I spent my time back there. Actually, you did some cleaning already. It's on your sh sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my coveralls. And that was really gross back there. Um, still can't really see much here except a big chunk of... Woolly mammoth fur on the back of there. Nice. There's a buildup of crust. Uh, maybe that's all it was. It was just a spot where it is. I, something was hard in there. <clears throat> Unless it just happened to get tight against the... Yeah, I think it was right in there. That fiberglass right there. Yeah. What's that right there? Is that a bolt? 
Well, yeah, maybe it was just right up against that fiberglass. Yeah, maybe it just held it in and... What's that other crusty looking thing <clears throat> up a little? Right there, what's that? Just crud. Just crud, just being tight against the bulkhead, I guess, and just held it in and burned through. Got that nice cake layer of oxidation. You know, perfect mm, condition for just like Built chewing through it every salts. time it gets wet. Let's see if we can take a peek here on this. Yeah. Just a thick layer of, of nastiness. Yeah, and see a couple of spots right there where it nearly burned through. That's our hole right down in there, I think, huh? Yeah, somewhere right in here, huh? Yep. Well, first part, I guess, is to clean that crust off Yeah. and see how much actual work it'll be just to fill the holes or will it be more worthwhile to just replate it there. Just plate over it right there with the patch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That wouldn't hurt nothing at all. As long as the bottom is fine, is good. All right, back on the tanks. Turned our engine room into a fab shop. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to do this work, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I have the back side of that one trimmed up um, to size. The smaller section is also cut to size. I'm um, gonna need to knock off the bottom of the panel that's facing us right here, and then also the bottom is gonna have to go. Uh, turns out there was some some pretty bad corrosion, like there's a spot right here. Boy, it's it's deep. It's real deep. Oh yeah. Yeah, so there. this uh, this tank was kind of just a ticking time bomb, really. Some pretty bad spots along the side here. Definitely not worth trimming it flush right here and putting an end plate or a bottom plate on it again. Um, there's really no way to weld on stuff like this. I'm thinking what might be the easiest thing to do instead of going in with a butt weld, which is going to be hard to get 100% penetration, we might just go ahead and, and have our piece bent like this, but make it uh, 3 16 uh, longer on each side. So this bend actually is on the outside here. And then we're just doing a, a fillet weld across good metal. And we can just bring this leg up a little bit long. Um, somewhere in here is good. I think we get past the, the bad corrosion at that point. Right here, there's kind of a deep pit um, right on the edge. It's, it's a little bit nasty, but if we come up, say an inch or so past that, then we'll be all on good metal. And I think that that's going to be the case all the way around. We need to kind of double check, but um, this was definitely the worst spots. This is where that wood was up against it. And then of course the bottom. It seems like a lot of work to do this, but in the reality of it all is this is really the only way we can save this, this tank down here. Um, I'm looking at it even just to get a piece this size down here Might be awful hard. I'm not sure we could I, I'm hoping that we're not gonna have too much problems with these ones But the good thing is that uh, once I get this cut out we can actually see if we can get this piece out or not Aside from the bottom the rest of the tank <clears throat> looks pretty good. We'll clean up the three sides. And yeah The top is uh, has a, a few little pits in it, but nothing Nothing uh, too substantial. Yeah. So. so yeah, let's wrestle this thing around. Right. It's quite awkward in here. So my SD card became corrupted the other day. Uh, we scrubbed up behind the, the generator. It looks a lot cleaner now. <laughs> Use that easy off, it takes it right off. Yeah, that and stuff seems to work really good. It's a little tough on the paint, but I don't know what kind of paint that is. I'm thinking it's just some cheap latex they had laying around or something like that. Yeah, it kind of just melts right off, so I don't make it, it say it anything too great. It might be some oil-based stuff, but if that was uh, probably a good enamel, uh, it wouldn't hurt it. 
for a gel coat. I want her gel coat. Yep. So I got that all scrubbed up, got the back wall and a platform there scrubbed up too. All that's left really is from there down into the stringer. So much cleaner, much fresher. Yeah, so well, we got this tank spun around. You can see the baffle inside there. So this is one reason that uh, like a bladder wouldn't work. And then honestly, um, those things are expensive. A 200 gallon bladder. Well, I did look at a, one for marine use, so that's probably going to double or triple the price. But at any rate, I think a 200 gallon one was $1,600. That was without a baffle in it. So definitely not in the budget and, and really just not practical. Well, when we're done with this, we'll have a good tank again and there won't be any worries with these at all. Yeah, it'll be bulletproof again. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think I can strike a line on the bottom here and just cut it where it's at. It's really quite a, you know, you got to contortion yourself around. Um, that won't be too bad to cut it in the position it's at right there, though. So I think I'll go ahead and do that, get that last one cut. Yeah, right here is where he's talking along there. And this edge needs trimmed up, too, so. Oh, I didn't get that one either, did I? Nope. Dang it. Two more cuts, Dad. Two more cuts. Yeah. So yeah, we'll get cut in here and carry on. Alrighty folks. Just a quick nip with a cutting disc right there on these welds and uh, yeah, we're broke loose. Uh, so we get this thing propped up a little bit and get this bottom pulled out from underneath. And that should give us a little bit more room to maybe roll this thing around. Um, this is the last edge here that I need to trim. And then that'll be all ready to go. Um, we'll just kind of put it back in place here for now. At some point I'll come in and get all the, all the edges uh, knocked down and get the sharp edges burrs off of them. Get cleaned up um, and prep for welding. Gotta do the same with what will become the hydraulic tank start sourcing all the uh, the fittings and everything that we're gonna weld in. Yeah, that came apart pretty easy anyway, so I'll get the bottom out of here and we'll take a, a better look at it. And um, hopefully I can turn this enough to trim this. Otherwise I'll just do it where it's sitting, I guess.
most of it. Some substantial corrosion, but like still a fair way to go. Like right here, it's not even that much. That's probably, it's not even a 16th. It's probably more like a 32nd. Um, other spots, it's more like a 16th. And then right down in this corner, where was that? Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, that's uh, that's just about through right there. That is real close to being through. All right, well that's the bottom piece. So yeah, last thing, just trim up this edge and get all these edges cleaned up, and that'll be kind of that for right now on this until we get materials ordered. Get our engine room cleaned up. Got a lot of chips everywhere. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we get them all cleaned up real good. Uh, we covered up the intake on the engine and everything, so there's nothing that can really get into. Um, these hydraulic suction lines that we cut and everything, we just put covers over them, so just be kind of slow process to get everything cleaned up down here. Probably just take the air hose and blow most of the stuff off and down into the bilge and then it's just easier to vacuum up from there. So, alrighty. How do you? Welcome back guys. And just doing a little tidy up down here. Um, getting all these aluminum chips and grindings cleaned up from our tank uh, refurbishment. So uh, those are back in their final place again, temporarily until we get the materials to do our repairs. Um, on the large fuel tank, we cut the bottom out of it. And of course see uh, where it was split will also need replated. Uh, there's quite a bit of corrosion on the bottom. There's a couple of spots that look like they're pretty close to being ready to let go. So we just decided it was easier just to cut it off. Um, we'll have a piece bent and then we'll just bring it up on the sides and, and do a nice fillet weld. That'll, uh, that'll also kind of uh, reinforce it and give it some strength on that bend. It'd be a lot easier than just trying to do a, a corner weld. Um, our new hydraulic tank is over there, our new old hydraulic tank. Same thing with that, I need to cut the bottom off of it and we'll just replate it also. There's some corrosion on it. And the back side, about a third of that's going to come off. So um, that's going to work out good. I think we're somewhere in the range of about a 55 gallon hydraulic tank. And the, uh, the main fuel tank is, I think it's cubing out somewhere around 140, 150 gallons. And so that doesn't quite add up because I said it was 200 gallons. Um, but uh, if you see the old mark here for the sight glass, this is actually 200 right here. So I haven't cubed these out yet to see exactly where they fit. But uh, if, if that's accurate, then you've got about five inches of head space on this. And that's, that's a, lot of, uh, a lot of volume. So we should be in pretty good shape on these tanks. We'll still have a, a nice big fuel tank for over here. Um, people were a little bit concerned about weight dis distribution. Um, it's, it's not an issue, it's not a problem. Um, you keep your boats trimmed by putting fish on one side, moving bait around, moving fuel around. Constantly changing anyways. It's so. always changing depending on what you're doing and, and the load you're putting on. So, um, you know, 50 gallons difference over there is not going to make a big difference. So that's, that's looking real good there. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is just get all these return lines broken down. There's a couple of filters that went into the, uh, the old little tank. So we're going to get that stuff broke down, get it off the wall here. And then I think we're going to relocate the small tank here, which is for our steering pump. Um, I think we're going to relocate it here. 
Uh, we'll put the, the filter directly off the side of it, get rid of this piece of hose that was joining it, and just kind of generally get that area cleaned up. We want these filters to kind of be in this area here where we've got a little sump where our fuel filters are going to be, so it's easier to contain spills and we don't have it over in the bilge area or above our crab pump. So I think that's going to work out real good. And uh, yeah, so that's next. <laughs>